Hey everybody, it's Father Edward Looney here. I recently had the opportunity to watch a documentary uh, called Medicine Man, the Stan Brock story. And a very interesting, intriguing story about this gentleman who really was a philanthropist who wanted to help other people. So there's a documentary out, it's coming out, you can see it in theaters and we'll get to talking a little bit about how you can see it, but uh, I'm joined today with Paul Angel and Jeff Eastman, and uh, very uh, Paul is the 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 producer or is involved with the film, and Jeff is a part of the organization uh, that Stan Brock uh, helped to found. So thanks so much for joining me to talk a little bit about the documentary. Having. And uh, maybe just first, you know, I, I'm curious, Paul, because, you know, I've made a documentary myself. So you obviously have some sort of interest when you decide that you want to commit to, to a documentary, filming it, writing the script, uh, all that it entails. So uh, how did you come across the story of Stan Brock? Well, um, I, I, I'm from Britain, where we have a national health care system. And the situation in the US has always intrigued me because it's so far from the reality that we experience here. I, I couldn't imagine um, my healthcare outcomes being tied to my wealth, which is essentially, or, or at least my um, job situation, which is essentially what is happening in the United States. So I was always interested in, in that topic. Um, and then one day I read the Sunday Times in the UK and there was an article about Stan and it, and it said that um, this British born um, Amazonian cowboy had become a US wildlife TV star and then given up everything, uh, took effectively took a vow of poverty um, and started running health clinics all across the US. And the article sort of posed the question, well, who, who is this guy and why is he motivated to do this? And, and, you know, why is he here in the United States? And the article never really resolved those questions. Um, so I was intrigued by Stan, but I also wanted to explore the issue of why so many people struggle to access um, healthcare services in the United States. And I just thought Stan would be the perfect way into that because He's got this very personal and emotional story about why he's there. Um, so I decided to pick up the phone and call his office. And much to my surprise, Stan himself answered the phone um, that 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 day. And this was a Sunday, right? Um, and he's in the office burning the midnight oil, getting the work done. And that's when I realized he he truly was uh, a unique, yeah, special person, and he'd be absolutely ideal for a feature length documentary. Yeah, you know, what you said there about uh, just your healthcare being connected to your wealth or your job or whatever, you know, that's something that I realized because uh, a few years ago, kind of simple story, like I had this infected tooth, had to get pulled. So, but first, you know, got the root canal, then that went bad. So then, then it was pulled, but it's like, here I am, you know, I went to an emergency appointment with my dentist. They took me in, then they got me an emergency referral to the endodontist or whatever. And, you know, $2,000 later, they took care of me. And I'm like, you know, there are a lot of people in the world who have, have these pains, have these ailments, and they can't readily have them taken care of as I did on that Friday morning uh, by going from doctor to doctor. And, you know, that was one of the things that Medicine Man really brought out this documentary that, uh, you know, you saw some of these people in the dental chair because these clinics weren't just dentistry, but they were also health. There there were a lot of different things going on. So Stan Brock founded this, this organization. And so maybe, Jeff, could you share a little bit about kind of the, the mission of Stan Brock and the organization that you uh, work with? It's really simple to boil down. Stan wanted to bring free health care to those in need. People often, often wonder, well, remote area medical, what do you mean by remote? Well, you can live next door to a hospital, a doctor's office, and you're remote from health care. So it's, he laid the foundation for it, and we just continue on with, it, with his mission 
of free health care to those in need, coast to coast, border to border. Yeah, so it seems like kind of the setup, the format of it all is that uh, you basically rent out like an arena. People begin camping out because they're like, healthcare, I need this. And some of these people have had uh, illnesses for for several months, and they finally are able to see a doctor because otherwise they had no means to do so. So uh, in the in the documentary, kind of seeing uh, them handing out different numbers, people would then be seen according to that number. But then I guess you know, you see some people are getting turned away. There's there's so many people, not enough doctors to help. So what's it like for you as an organization when you have to turn people away that have come seeking help? That's the hardest part about my job. It's it's great to bring those volunteers together, those to greet those people at six in the morning who've been there all that long waiting in a parking lot on a sleeping mat or in their car. The hardest part is when we can no longer re- take care of all of them. We've reached capacity. I have no more volunteer providers. I have to go to that family that's done everything right to say, I'm sorry, we really can't see you today. I know you've done everything right. We'll have another clinic, hopefully within you know a couple hours. But for example, we were in uh, Fort Worth this weekend we had a patient who drove from Nevada to our clinic who had been to a Nevada clinic a couple of weeks beforehand just to get care. Yeah. You know, this is something that kind of touches home to me a little bit just because my mother was a single mother. She was pretty impoverished and, you know, toward the end of her life, I was really footing the bill for a lot of her, her, Uh, needs. And so uh, she, I I know she had some sort of dental problem and uh, where I live in Wisconsin. So in Northeast Wisconsin and Oshkosh, there was a homeless shelter. You didn't have to be homeless, but they had a free medical care clinic. And, you know, once a month, every, you know, on the first Tuesday or something, they would have a clinic. And that was the only way my mother was able to get her little tooth problem taken care of was to go to that free clinic. So, so I think the work that you're doing is pretty incredible. And I'm wondering how many of these clinics do you do throughout the country in a given year? Our traditional clinics, such as you've seen the movie, we do upwards as close to a hundred of those a year. In addition, in, at the end of the movie, there's an extra bonus that Paul has been gracious, gracious enough to produce that talks about where we are now and moving forward with telehealth and some other great, great, great uh, uh, expectations. But the key takeaway from the movie is how one man, Stan Brock, can make a difference in the lives of almost a million patients. Yeah. And how did you get to know Stan Brock? Uh, just like people will get to know him during this movie, I was watching 60 Minutes and decided I need to go volunteer. So I'm hoping people will come out, see the movie, get motiv- motivated, and go and volunteer in their community. And what are some ways that people could help your organization? So, uh, and, and tell us the name of your organization again, but how can they get involved? Can they give money? <clears throat> Somebody out there is a doctor and you're coming to their stake and they volunteer their services. What are different ways people get involved? It's remote area medical, ramusa.org. You don't have to be a medical provider. I definitely am not one. Uh, All you need is a passion to give back. You just go to the website, click on donate. If you can't come out to a clinic, if you can make that journey, you can come visit us. We are go coast to coast. Just click on the volunteer button. To really learn about the organization, make sure you come out on the 14th and buy a ticket and see the movie. And uh, tell me, so it's called Medicine Man. It's the story of Stan Brock. Why did he get that name? Simply because he brought medicine to so many people? Because, you know, I live at like uh, right by a Native American reservation. And so, you know, uh, my secretary actually saw my calendar, Medicine Man interview, and she's like, look at you getting all involved in the culture, you know. And uh, obviously I said, no, no, it's a, it's a documentary, a story about a man that brought medicine to people. So but how did he come to earn that nickname? That's a that's a Paul Angel question right there. Well, um, it's not really an official uh, title, but um, 
certainly when Stan was um, living on um, the savannas of Guyana um, and um, living amongst the indigenous um, Wapishana people, um, he was for many the only access to uh, healthcare um, and very rudimentary healthcare he would provide to to those around him. I think he started off in veterinary um, care and then gradually learned a little bit about being able to help um, people with ailments there. So I think he was known on the Rupanini Savannah as your only chance if you had uh, healthcare issues. Yeah, so it's interesting how that follows them all follows him all throughout his life then from from that moment to then, you know, this career of of helping people uh, in so many different ways. So tell me a little bit about the filmmaking process behind this. Obviously, you mentioned earlier that you contacted uh, Stan. He answered the phone. Actually, you spoke with him directly. Uh, but then how did the whole documentary project unfold? And, you know, I it's my understanding Stan died a, a few years ago. So obviously he won't see this project uh, to its end. But uh, yeah, what was that like, uh, the process for you? It unfolded slowly, uh, to put it in a word. I didn't have gray hair when I started making this film. <laughs> but if I rewind to those early days, First of all, I had to convince Stan to even make a film that focused on him. Uh, he's a very modest guy. Um, he, he's a man of deeds and not words primarily. Um, so that took some convincing. And then when we worked together, I had to earn his um, respect um, before he would open up to me and talk about um, his personal feelings and his motivation and the challenges that he'd experienced. And some of the difficulties he, he, he'd faced and, you know, the tough times in life that made him the man he was. But by going to see him every year over a, a six year period, um, I think I did ultimately earn, earn that um, right. And to be honest, that that's the same when you make a documentary about anybody. You don't just have the right to turn up with your camera, shove it in somebody's face and expect them just to like pour their heart out. There's always um a certain process of um earning earning your uh corn as it were so it stan was no more difficult i have to say um it, to get to know as a person than anybody else i'd i'd ever worked with and, and that's because you know just beneath a, a kind of old school um stiff british stiff upper lip exterior there's an inc incredibly compassionate heart that beats within this man. Um, his focus, his total devotion uh, to the cause um, is really exceptional. I mean, when when Stan started uh, Remote Area Medical in 1985, he sacrificed everything he had. He He sold the plot of land that he owned. He sold his car. He sold some other possessions. Um, and I mean, even arguably the relationship with his wife uh, was sacrificed because she wasn't willing to live um, that kind of ascetic lifestyle where everything would be focused on um, delivering the health care that he did. And, you know, Stan, from the age of 45, Stan spent his time sleeping on the office floor he, he didn't have um a home and you're probably wondering well how could he survive so the city of knoxville um rented this uh, dilapidated schoolhouse to him as a, as the office uh with a peppercorn rent of like a dollar a year and he uh survived by uh, eating rice beans and water and the rice and beans would be um brought around to him by friends so Basically, what Stan did was he stripped away all of the distractions in life that allowed him just to focus on this one issue. And I think that is truly remarkable, um, especially in the modern world. It's, I think it's very, very hard to do. And, and one of the reasons I think people connect with this film is that um, we all, I think, at times when things are challenging, we all have this fantasy that... Um, we could strip things away and just focus on what really matters in life, but we can't do it because we have mortgages, we have children, we have, we need to make uh, make money and so on, you know. Um, 
but Stan had the resolve um, and the good fortune as well uh, to be able to do that. And I think that's what makes him a, a truly unique American humanitarian. So this is coming to the theaters uh, next week on Tuesday. And uh, is this part of the Fathom event releases or how, how is this being distributed to the theaters? And uh, is it one night only? How can people make sure they are able to see it? Yes, that's right. This is a Fathom release, November the 14th, 7 p.m., whichever state or time zone you're in in America. It is one night only. Um, there will be a special short film after the main feature film, as Jeff mentioned, just updating people um, on what's happened with Remote Area Medical uh, since um, Stan passed. Um, and you can go to Fathom Events, uh, Medicine Man Stan Brock Story um, for the ticket page. There's a zip code finder there. So you put in your zip code, it'll tell you where the nearest um, theatre is. Well, it's a, a wonderful story. You know, I'm a Catholic priest, kind of as you're talking about Stan Brock, kind of makes me think of, you know, Mother Teresa, who had such a great care and compassion for the poor, for the sick, for the marginalized. And, uh, you know, I don't know what Stan's religion was, but, you know, if he was a Catholic, he'd be a guy that would be eligible for sainthood uh, just because of the way that he reached out to so many and and helped uh, so many as well. So so really, you know, even if, I don't know if he was a Christian or not, but but uh, he was doing the work of Jesus. And uh, especially as Jesus mentions in Matthew uh, 25, that he did it to the least of our brothers and sisters. So truly an inspiring story in theaters on Tuesday. Uh, go see it if you're able. So thanks so much to both of you, to Paul and Jeff for sharing a little bit about the the movie and also about RAM as well. And I hope people will uh, learn more about that organization to bring healthcare to those who are in need. So thanks so much to the both of you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Father.